we're, we're in Nashville, Pete. We are. And we're looking for the Gibson garage. How do you say garage? Garage. 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 Gibson garage. garage. Gibson garage. Gibson I don't garage. know. Garage. Whoa! Maybe it's up here. This place is enormous! Yeah, somebody's left some facts here as well. Bloody hell, it's massive! Your Bonner Martin's in there! Wow! Wow. Wow. Gibson guitar fan paradise. Wow. I always wanted to come here, man. I'm so, blown away right now. Yeah, so we're, we're about two miles, I think, away from Gibson HQ in Nashville, downtown uh, Nashville. And they've opened uh, something called the Gibson Garage. Mm -hmm. Or garage. Like a, or garage, or yeah, garage. Yeah. I think it's a, definitely a, a Mark Agnesi kind of brainchild. Here he is. The Mr. man himself. Mr. Authentic. Sadly, he couldn't, mm. he couldn't be here, could he? Um, he's away. No, sadly. he's on holiday. Yeah. He heard we were coming and booked a holiday <laughs> yeah, as fast exactly. as possible. <laughs> so we thought we'd take you around. Um, I guess if you're ever in Nashville, it'd be a kind of cool place to come. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a shop, right? So it's it's, a shop. It's, you can come here and buy stuff if you want. Yeah, and also it's a venue. Did you know that? Yes. So everything here is on wheels. They can wheel everything away. They can shut all of these doors down. And then there's estates over here right now. There's a uh, uh, Triumph, of course, a British motorbike. Yes. Uh, uh, slash Gibson bike. And then everything here goes away. And then they can have, That's very know, cool. have gigs in here, which is amazing. Um, I would love to, to see that at some point. Let's start over here. Well, in fact, before we start, I've got to say, having just come from the factory, there's a lovely detail here where, where when you're in any yeah. big guitar factory, they yeah. all do this thing where they suspend the guitars from the ceiling and yeah. they move them around on a really slow conveyor belt whilst it dries, dry. yeah. whilst the finish dries. And they've kind of, obviously it's moving much faster than a factory one would, but they've sort of replicated that vibe here. It's a really clever detail. It is. I love it, um, man. It's great. What a big a, place as well. And a, apparently, wow. somewhere up behind that wall there is a little hatch. So if you want to try something, they stop the conveyor, they wait is for there? the guitar to come round, they get the hatch, and then they pull the guitar through, and then they've got a little bench up there. They can just do a tweak on it, and you get to, you know you can try it. How cool is that? So man? if we start over here, yeah. is the custom shop area. So this is custom. Um, I mean, obviously you can come to any uh, Gibson custom shop dealer and order your own made-to-measure guitar if you want to. But what's kind of cool here, and maybe you saw some of these, and you know, in the video when we were at Custom Shop yesterday, they'll have examples of colors and tops and some auto burst uh different neck profiles i think yeah i think like so you can get an idea of do i like the feel of that one or whatever it's i like the cool. name of this one authentic medium that's the mark agnesi signature series neck <laughs> profile and then uh, right down to even if you want to choose this this is basically what happens when a dealer kind of does the whole custom shop picking tops you sort of see and tops Tops and tops. Down here. That's a good one. It doesn't look as good as any of the ones we picked yesterday. Absolutely not. Whilst we're in here, we're going to do the garage bit first. We're sort of seeing some of the sort of more normal stuff, if there is such a thing. And then we're going to the vault. So stay tuned, because there's like a behind the scenes bit where all the like crazy collectible stuff is. Look at this. It looks like it comes yeah, down come like that. Down. Yeah, you can oh, choose fantastic. more wood. Wow. Murphy Laps over here. Interesting colour, isn't it? I like that colour on a on What's a that, v. silver? Uh, just says 58 Karina V. Actually says it's white, which it clearly isn't. But there we are. <laughs> we know what it's like trying to get the right tag on a guitar in retail. I mean, they're, they're all, they're all, they're all, they're all locked. locked. This up. one is not locked. Look at that. Do you remember we saw this? Um, they had a SG special in in the custom shop yesterday, and again, the, they had these unbelievably wide cracks on the yeah. finishing that I wasn't I wasn't sure how, that, that I like that terribly much. I like the, the, the ones where the cracking is a little bit thinner. That's nice. <sighs> bit of BB, like BB in the background. Yeah. You might notice there's a lot of Mesa Boogie amps here as well, but you know, that's uh, the reason for that. Hopefully we'll get some of those in the UK soon as yeah, well, right? I, I mean, I, I'm reliably informed uh, internet land 
uh, that by next spring, summer, Boogie should be back in, in Europe. Yeah. Oh, that would be amazing. We'll do some videos on that, because I like, like me as a Boogie, as you know. Gibson hats. Uh, do you want one of these for Xander? He's too big for this already, isn't he? <laughs> but what he can have, he can oh, have a no, little no, sweater. No. Like, little this, sweater. This, this looks a bit bigger. That would fit him, wouldn't it? Daddy's little rocker. That's amazing. Next up, Lee. Do you be a I mean, there's some... Uh, to be honest with you, I don't, you know... This I, is local collaboration. I love all the merch. Yeah, so these are, um, like I was saying, these are local, they, they collaborate with local artists uh, for some of these t-shirt designs, which is cool. Um, not cheap, but you know, super cool. What's around here? Is it maybe phones? Yeah. Oh, good old Slash. Some of the other brands that oh, that's uh, a collection. Gibson have acquired over the years, KRK. Yeah. Some of these oh, naughty, yeah, in, uh, poking. Look, there he is. That's a proper coffee table book, that one, isn't it? Absolutely, it's a coffee table. Smash the collection. Do we want to look at some me. of the uh, Epiphone stuff? See, this is a guitar I really love, man. The Nighthawk, it was the... Um... Nighthawk. No, is no, that Yeah, not... this is a signature of... Yes, um... the, the lady from Heart. Yeah, I fanatic. Think. Yeah. Is that right? Is it hers? I think it's one. I... Nancy <laughs> Wilson, something like that. Yes. I could be wrong. I love that. It's a great guitar. Oh, I remember oh, doing a video at... on Oh, that's the Bonamassa, the new... Is it? I th that's the new Bonamassa 3 pickup um, SG. I think it is. Yeah, it is. <sighs> that's cool. That's a great looking guitar. It's interesting, actually. You know, you're going to see this um, from Gibson and Epiphone over the next 12, 18 months or so. You're going to see uh, a departure. Well, you're going to see a change in that sort of 1,000 to 2,000 pound mm -hmm. uh, point. So historically, for the, as long as I can remember, uh, Gibson used to really try and make the cheapest guitars they possibly could out of America by stripping off all of the bells and whistles yeah. and just to try and hit those sort of thousand pound to fifteen hundred pound price points. Yeah. And I'd always said to Gibson, I think it's a, you know, I think it's a shame that you don't just make amazing Epiphone guitars at that price point. Yes. And then if you're going to put Gibson on the headstock, just s start at a certain quality yeah. level. Don't I agree, don't man. make it worse. Yeah. And I think I'm obviously not the only person thinking that because what you're going to see over the next, well, you started to see it already, but yeah. you'll, you'll, you'll just see Gibson will just exit completely from making, you Nothing. know, really cheap, cheap guitars yeah. in America. Um, and they'll allow Epiphone then to just make, then this is a good example. So you'll see more and more signature Epiphone stuff with American pickups on yeah, it yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So that'll be cool. I mean, look at something like this. I mean, it's a beautiful guitar, isn't oh, it? It's an Epiphone. Yeah. Look at that top. I mean, that's something they started doing two or three years ago, which is making the Epiphone line um, mirror the Gibson line more. Yeah. It's very cool with all the TV screens in here. It's a cool vibe. Adam Jones, you look at stuff this. <laughs> oh. Great concept, isn't it? All the, like, every, there's like 10 different Adam Jones models, each with their and own you have graphics to have on the back. You've got to buy all. one of each, yep. obviously. Buy them all. Wow, what's this? Oh, Matt Heafy. Don't even know if I've seen one of those. Fishman loaded. Wow. Les Paul Customs. I'm still most interested in this, though. We'll have to just circle back to that. That's it. Really, we should thank them. If it wasn't for that, yeah, we, 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 would, may have, never, we would have, we, we may never been teamed here. up. I like this t-shirt, Lee. That's good. Mary Ford was a badass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's some Kramers in here. Just Are quickly, uh, yeah, they put the... Kramer versus Kramer. Naughty Kramer in the corner. Yeah, it is. It does, it does somewhat feel like this is the... Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there was a bit of space. See, still, this is still one of my favourites. That's not Capcom. They're mocking us now. <laughs> that's still, that's still wow. amazing, that. I'm not sure about this one. The warning... Uh, I love this. I did always I like the... It. That was the um, Richie Sambora, wasn't yeah, it? With, with the, the stars. stars on it. That's the white, yeah, the white one. Classic. <sighs> nice. Tremendous. Yeah. Tremendous. Let's make Kramer great again. Here's some things you don't see every day, Lee. Yeah. Remember these? Well, we were just saying that, that bizarrely, the this yeah. was a, I remember doing a massive blowout on these because the, the, years ago, because they weren't terribly popular. And as, of course, with all guitar things, eventually people start going, oh, I don't suppose you still do that double cut thing, do you? Because that was quite cool. And now yeah. they've sort of put it back in the range. Yeah. I do like these. I do like, I saw, the bound, yeah. I do like the bound. Yeah. Uh, the bound. That's a special double cut. Now, mm. Some of these are the, at the factory yesterday, the custom shop factory with uh, Bixby on it, but in black, and it was all aged. You know, it looked amazing, man. You know, proper rock and roll guitar. These great gig bags. Bevel. Look at these. Mm. You tried to gig that around I like, Nashville. I like, I like the white one. That's the best one. 
you gig that around Nashville. It's the white and brown and gold together. It's so Dallas, isn't it? <laughs> you need, you do need the matching it's cowboy de- boots and Stetson, absolutely. don't you? Absolutely. A little pair of denim hot pants. <laughs> yeah, Daisy Dukes, as they call them. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, they're all locked. Look, you, you yeah. need the key. That's cool, though. Yeah. What is that? Candy it's, apple yeah, it's just red. A, just a 56 Lesbo stand, but just yeah. in a colour you never see. Yeah. But well, that's like that we saw in the factory, that mm. um, British AIDS British Reading Green. That looked good. That, that was good. good. Oh, that's man. Got Murphy Labs, right? Mm. The, these are the new colours. Oh, these are the limited aren't they? colours, that's yeah, right. Yeah. I still, the f- I, Fuchsia pink one is still my favourite of all of them. The, the, the way they worked this in Europe was they, they picked their like, I don't know, five biggest dealers, yeah. of which Anderton's was one, and then they kind of said, look, you can have two colours each, but you can't have all the colours. Yeah. So I can't remember which two we ended up with. I but think, we are, are going to get I them think it was these all colours. Eventually, some point, yeah. they'll all become available. Didn't we see a guy paint this colour? We did. The Gibson Les Paul is the world's most famous guitar. Discuss for your <laughs> university dissertation. Well, lots of people. I, I mean, mean just I'll, look I'll, at the names. Arguably right? it is. Um, More stuff, stickers. Nice t-shirts. I know, these They're are really great, nice, aren't they? Like, I like the feel of them. SGs. Yeah, now we're all some oh, of the crazy it. shapes. Wow, man, look. Here's some more. Should this be illegal? Well, Floyd, 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 Rose on a, Floyd Rose on a Les Paul. No, I don't think so. Three pickups on a Les Paul, should that be illegal? No. Definitely one of the I two should be so. illegal. I don't think so. I love this. Welcome to Tube Town. This is a great guitar sound. Yeah, it is. I just think it's just a, it's a great guitar sound. Oh, that's, a, that's right, that's the Tony Iommi, isn't yeah, it? I remember the weird pickup surrounds and... I mean, I need an SG man at some point. I need to Me get too. one of these with the little cog nail Would you, you thing go here. with the Maestro or something on yours, would you? Yeah, I'll go with that one, I think. Or uh, the other, oh, the other. Know. You didn't see some Johnny Winters back here. Come and have a look quickly. Did, was there? Yeah, you got, so you got here, you got a, is that a Jimmy? Is it 60? Kirk Hammett, Johnny Winter, BB King. So this, this is the Hendrix V, isn't it? Yeah. So what was this one here? I mean, honestly and truthfully, it. Oh, every... that's a Regal. Oh, that's the BB King of the Regal. Ooh. Ooh, I didn't, those all went immediately, they, they didn't they? They were like that, yeah. yeah. Obviously not, because there's still Look one in Look at the Lucille, that's a great looking guitar, yeah. isn't it? Bit of Rolling Stones in the background. Is this it? I mean, honestly, America. $40 for a packet of Plectrums. Crikey. Five quid for some pickers. Pickers, Someone's stickers. Someone's making some money. Oh, you get some of these as well for your liquid death. <laughs> the wraps liquid around. death over here as well. Yeah, Amazing. Liquid death, death anywhere. We've got here books, coffee table, the bursts. Burst Believers, Justin Bieber's Book Burst of believers. Les Pauls. <laughs> <laughs> I like these uh, bookends. Is that Gary Moore? Oh, I've lost the page now. There we Man go, alive. look. It's such a beautiful guitar. Can I just guitar, point out that this is an amazing magazine? I don't know it. Yeah, he does some amazing photographs. I think, is it Eleanor, I think? Nice. Yeah, Eleanor nice Jane. Gift for somebody there. Beautiful, beautiful photographs and just. Oh, Pete. Anyway. Come on, man. Yeah, I know, I saw that earlier. That is so you. You too can look like the scratch plate of a J200. Look at inside. Hold oh, that. Oh, yes. Hold that. I take it back. Uh, what size have I given you? That looks small. Large. That looks small for you. Oh, is it large? Thanks. You're going to look smoke. Oh, so good. Oh. You're like a T-bird. <laughs> yes. Oh, hang on, I found I'm going to wear that for the rest of the year. No, uh... I needed that last night out in Nashville, oh, didn't I? Yeah. I definitely needed that. <laughs> wow. I think if you can rock five buttons on a collar, five buttons, then you know you're you know you're too cool. How cool is this jacket, though? Better hang it back. I know it's going to end up buying it. This, uh, this, uh, no, this, what are we? We're in like a Mesa Boogie section here with some ES guitars. Uh, oh, oh, look at that, oh, man. Yeah, I was just about oh. to say, check that out. Still, that Chris Cornell, um, not that that one is a Chris Cornell, but that's essentially what his looked like with a big spy on it. <laughs> Olive drab. It's just a great You color. know what, this, I can't wait to get Boogie back in, man. 
because I love these. This California tree is yeah. such a good amp. I yeah. played the Fillmore yesterday. It's crazy Fillmore to think that it's and... been nearly five years or something yeah. since we had Boogie in the yeah. UK. Want to go this way? Uh, there's this section here. I know this was always interesting because this is where um, left-handed Gibson will do things like bumped and scratched stuff from the from their factory. I'll make it down here, or even. Yeah. The old like prototype colours and things where they'll yeah, the just do bits and yeah. Uh, um. oh, you'll rectify under what head? Badlander. Oh come on, man. That's a good T-shirt. In yeah. fact, this is like didn't didn't um, isn't that like a that pedal show T-shirt? It looks very much like a pedal show, mm. doesn't it? Shout out. Um, wow, wow, wow. Do you want to have a look a at some whole uh, section just for slash Les Pauls? How about some acoustic guitars, Lee? Good shit. What do you think? Come on this way. Yeah. Right, look Ooh. at these handles, Lee, just before we go and check this out. I know. Nice detail, isn't it? Yeah. <gasps> wow, there's a oh, leather jacket. No, that's the one. If that says Gibson on the back, you have to buy that. What have you got? Like a dodgy. That's for the dude, Pippa's isn't it? Home cardigan. Oh my god. What this is for you, Lee. Here we go. Oh, that is definitely for me. Was that a calf can? Is it called that? I don't even know what it is. Or like a poncho? You need to buy this for the uh, <laughs> for me. Take home for the wife. Yeah, for you. You oh, look like awesome. Beautiful. Um, look, hummingbird shirt, man. Look, I love that. No, that is a that is a good jacket. Oh, it doesn't say Gibson on it though. It could be any old leather jacket. Can I just point out that this is cool, man? <laughs> look at that hummingbird on the back there. But is it? I mean, okay, can I just also just look at the price? Yeah, but that's how much, like, I, where did I go the other day? I think I was in a Ralph Lorenz shop and I just thought, who pays 400 pounds for a jumper? Lots of people do. Yeah, maybe. Lots of people do. The same people that pay 10 grand for a guitar, Lee. <laughs> wow, look at this in here. <gasps> there we go, look. What is that? That's the 07 harp guitar. Ornate harp, uh, harp guitar was handcrafted by O. Will Gibson. It's featured in the book of Walters Carter. God, that's cool. It's in a hundred years. Wow. That is cool, isn't it? And a legend has it that that is the guitar that uh, Richie Sambora wrote Wanted, Dead or Alive on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So this is also, oh. must be, the, this is Billy Reed. It's probably a local um, creator, like designer. That's fantastic, look at that. Banjos. There's another dress behind here if you want to. Uh, I must admit, they've done a they've done a exceptional an amazing job, job on the it? shop fit. I know it sounds a bit nerdy, but I suppose as a retailer, I do appreciate a good shop fit. Um, look at this! Wow, what is this? Is that it, ornate? Is it just an Epiphone J2? Yeah, look at all. Look at it. Oh yes, that's super ornate, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. What's it say in the sound hole? I can't read that. There's no light in there. Let me have a look. look. That is a J200 Vine. J200 Vine. I must admit, it's beautiful. I've always found these inlays a little bit sort of... Um... It's like Transformers. No. What even is that as well? Oh, That's careful. Good. Yeah, exactly. Let's not go there. FT Frontier. It's the USA. Yeah, Rosetta. We never managed I to think, do those. I think it's that literally came out just as, as the Yogi did. went, oh, can't sell yeah. amps to the UK anymore. What are these here then? So these are the Gibsons. <sighs> I should have literally stopped off here before last night. You should have. Ah. What a, this is incredible, Yeah, they've isn't done it? a beautiful job. They've done yeah. a beautiful job. Congratulations, Gibson. Me likey likey. Let's go and have a look at this motorcycle. Yes, let's go, and, let's go into the bit where only yeah. the special people are allowed. Let's have our photo taken here. This is the thumbnail, isn't it? Frank, John, Mick, Ringo, <laughs> check this out. Oh, hey! Oh, hey ah, there he is. Hey, I heard there was a security <laughs> concern in the garage. <laughs> was that what it was, was it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think he broke into the Gibson it? garage. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, Matt. Wow, look at this. What yeah, do you, I mean, so we're now under the, the, the uh, showroom, the Gibson garage, in what you call 
Uh, this, what is this, like an artist This is like the green or? room. Yeah, right. so the, you know, in the garage, that stage is an actual stage, and, and we have performances there, and this is where the artists hang out. It's where we have artist meetings, and uh, it's also where our vault is. So The vault. Oh, man, I've heard a lot about this yeah. vault. I'm excited. So, come on, what famous bottoms have been sat on these sofas recently? Pretty much all of our artists come through all here. All the one, famous one, bottoms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at one time or another, they come through here. But um, yeah, I mean, it's a great place to have a you know, quiet spot for meetings to test uh, amplifiers and Yeah, what a great and hang. It's amazing. Oh, look at this. You've got an old Pac-Man machine in the corner. You must have bought a lot of these because I think there's one in the London garage as well. So. I mean, that, that's really the, the first rule of interior design for Mark. You know. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> Lord, Lord, Lord These are Richards great, aren't they? Lord, these are great. Roll. Look at that. Class of 81. Is that Dolly playing a Gibson banjo? Yeah. She played more than a banjo, I'll tell you that. Wow. <laughs> Come well, on, I've got to see this vault let's thing. Show you the yeah, vault. Let's have the vault. All right. Well. Oh, it's like. So is it like. No, is you got to tell me the right this is, Which book? You got to find the right book. Hang on, let me just see. Let me see. Oh, it's this one, it's is it? The, yeah. What's that? Oh, it's, <laughs> it's the purple book. That's what. Oh, my God. Look, this that is was, like. Uh, Larry Harry Potter. Mark Agnese's autobiography. And it just <laughs> yes, opens it was. the. Uh, was that very thin, was it? Holy. <laughs> Mark, sorry. <gasps> so. Okay, so oh, th this, is, this is not like for show, right? This is, these are all the real deal. Absolutely. Yep. This is the. Oh my gosh, I'm just best, literally, I'm, I'm literally doing a quick tot up in my head here of guessing what sort of value guitars you've got in here, but you're talking oh, sort of probably upwards of what, four to five million dollars worth of guitars in here, maybe three to four million dollars worth I, of guitars? I haven't done the math, but yeah, there's, I mean, there's guitars in here that are valued well over a million dollars. So. I know, that's what that's I mean. That's just ours, this yeah. one here, isn't it? That's, yeah, that's the mm. real one. Holy moly. All right, so where should we start here? Because they all have a great story. Well, I'll okay, give you okay brilliant. Yeah. Well, let, let's, let's, let's start 1924. All right, well, first of all, we're next to Carlos Santana's Mesa Boogie Amp. So Wait, that's this, cool. this is the video that <laughs> yeah. brought us together, one of the first videos. It is, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. but this isn't, this is the actual. This is the amp, yeah, and the rotary. Is that the amp? Yeah, this, is, the, the this is Carlos what? Santana's yeah. actual amplifier. Yeah. I remember that I interviewed Carlos and I think he, he told a story of the, that when he had all the original Mark 1s, he used to use them face down on stage, all like yep. as, as cranked as they could possibly <laughs> go, but everything just face down on stage, just like Actually lunatic. But, yeah. How did you come by that then? Or just something that Mesa Boogie so had, I guess? Mesa had it in their archive and they um, obviously uh, were able to get it back and recover it. I have some other historic amps too, we have Keith Richards' uh, Mark 1 in here as well. But, yeah. Anyway, so, right, yes. so, uh, so this is really, I mean, one of the more historic early 20th century guitars that we have. Uh, we've got, I should say, another 100 plus guitars in our, in our mm -hmm. like, total vault, and we try to keep the best of the best in here and, and then swap out some things. So this is uh, the only uh, known factory black Lloyd Lore era L5. So this is a signed Lloyd Lore L5. Why that's special is Lloyd Lore, you know, not only did he... Uh, kind of changed the game with mandolins with the F5, but he created the first L5s, mm -hmm. and that L5 was, has been still the longest running guitar that Gibson uh, produces. I'm not, so I'm not super familiar with the, the so Law Guitars, I know was a guitar brand, is that a connected thing? So is he- Yeah, they tried to capitalize on his Gibson uh, connection, but yeah, Lore was uh, a Gibson master luthier engineer, right. so sonic engineer, and, okay. and a degree engineer mm -hmm. in, in uh, acoustic arts. And he went on and, and continued to work on electric instruments after his time with Gibson. Right. Uh, and then uh, passed so he, away, and, and kind of his greatest achievements were all with Gibson. Right. So, so he's like a, almost like a Ted McCarthy, but what thirty years 100%. before? Yeah. He and, and really uh, the first like true master luthier that Gibson's ever had. Crazy. And they, we've got wonderful photos of him, you know, working I mean, on I, I, obviously we don't get to touch these guitars and stuff, but Absolutely. in terms of the condition of it looks, I mean, cracky, so next year, that's a hundred years old. It's a hundred years old next year. And the, wow. the case is as clean as the guitar. It's unbelievably clean. And so then, if you buy uh, a guitar, you can have it for a hundred years. Yeah, if you buy a nice guitar, anyway. Yeah, Speaking of true. unbelievably clean and rare, so wow. this is a Rosewood SJ200. So this is the, the first, oh we'll, we'll, we'll see the back of this one, but this is the first 
uh, <laughs> version of the J200. So 1938 was its debut, and it debuted with rosewood. Uh, this is actually Amazon rosewood. A lot of people think it's Brazilian rosewood. It's a different variety of rosewood that they were sourcing at that time. And it is one of the best sounding acoustic guitars I've ever played in my life. And I have no idea if it's in tune right now, but, but it's just super warm. So when did the J200 stop using rosewood and go to maple then? Uh, when they came back in 1948. All right. So yeah, the, all the early ones were rosewood. So we just released a new range of rosewood uh, studio J200s, yeah. and a lot of people say, why did you select Rosewood? Well, that's how they were designed originally. So. There is something magic about Rosewood back inside some guitars. Yeah. That's another lunatic, you know, again, that it is brand new. Six to 17 years off of being 100 years old as well. Crazy. And it, it just yeah. looks brand new. And, and speaking of Rosewood guitars, so this is the first guitar on American television. So this yeah. was uh, September of 1939, a female musician, female guitarist, played this on TV, documented. We've got the newspaper articles. This one did not survive in as great of condition, so it's uh, you know, more of a player grade, if you will, but such a historic instrument. What's the, so Vance Jumbo and J45, are they an identical body shape? Is it, or is it just, or very similar, and is it what, just one is, what mahogany and the others rose with back inside? I or? mean, essentially, yeah. I mean, you've got because the advanced jumbo and different, different I, I, aesthetics. The bound, um, like the binding specifically, is, is the big difference. I, I, I never really feel like the advanced jumbo gets the same totally sort of. Agree. Um, it's it's what made me fall in love with. Yeah, yeah. That, that made me fall with Gibson. Fall in love I, with Gibson I, guitars. Yeah. I, w I would say it's even up until. Fairly recently, I just assumed the advanced jumbo was quite a modern interpretation of like a J45, right. but yeah. it, I didn't. So it supersedes, uh, so it we, precedes J45, does it? Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and when we say uh, advanced <laughs> bracing, we're talking about the specific style of bracing they used in this era, which does differ from the J45, the banner okay. years, mm. the, the bracing change. Because so that's a new Murphy Lab option, isn't it? Now there's an advanced jumbo, I think, in, in the... Um, not in this new batch of Murphy Lab right. acoustics, but... I oh, no, so it's like Southern Jumbo get, is what's yeah. in it. So what's the difference between a Southern Jumbo and an advanced jumbo? A Southern Jumbo is... Uh, um, well, actually, the one that we have in the Murphy Lab collection is a rosewood variant. Mm -hmm. So they did Southern Jumbos in both mahogany and rosewood. So feature-wise, it's very similar. It doesn't have the neck binding. It doesn't have the aesthetics, but it's a very similar guitar. Mm. Again, I mean, it's, but there's parts of me when you see this, and I know the Murphy Lab acoustics haven't, they've just done the ultralight aging yet, so it's not, but it's, when you see this, it, you have to give credit to what Tom Murphy's achieved with the aging, because yeah. it's like... Yeah, he does not nail it, doesn't you, you, he? <laughs> I've seen electric guitars with like identical kind of patina on it, is what you get on there, or on checking on there, and you just end up going like, you know, it's like, it's yeah. so... And it's real. Yeah, this is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's the thing, it's, it's tough mm. to have some vintage guitars at your disposal to compare them to, but yeah, they end up very similar. And this is an original 1958 Carina V. This is one of the earlier ones, and how we know that is, well, uh, for one, has a pretty early serial number, but some of the key differences between later run flying Vs, different jack plate orientation, mm. And then it's actually missing a screw. Normally it would have a screw here and here on the pick guard. Right. But because they routed a certain number of those originals differently, they could only fit the screw there. Um, and there's like a, one in the Experience Museum in Seattle that's touted as the very first Flying V uh, that has that same sort of pick guard orientation. And also the black pick guards on Flying Vs are very yeah. rare. Only the very first ones have that's that. Just, that's just all amazing. It's all just, just m m monstrous. So I remember doing, uh, not on, I haven't played an original 58, but we did some videos mm. on the, uh, just monstrous. I, I still, tone in those guitars. That it's incredible. 10 years from, awesome. you know, maybe a bit more than 10 years, but let, let's say 1950 to 1965, and you just look at how that just defines Attention. the electric yeah. guitar landscape, didn't it? From what, not just Gibson, but you know, and not even just Fender as well, but you know, those brands, and it's like, that was it. Whatever was in the water for that sort of 10 or 15 years, sprinkled it and just went, there you go. That's rock culture defined cars, cars were the forever. Same, they? Cars, they yeah, the maybe. 50, in the American cars with mm -hmm. all the big tail fins on it. It's changed from the, you know, the, the uh, Bel Air 
and uh, I think it was a like perfect storm of, in the 60s. it was design meets cultural influence yeah, meets yeah. sound and and you could argue that the like the advancements of an electric guitar kind of stopped in 1957 and haven't really improved since then right with the, the introduction of the humbucker yeah um, but then of course that was also the rock mm. like the perfect storm of the, the yeah. rock movement happening Something at the same awesome time guitar. awesome awesome Wow. All right, and then of course it wouldn't be the vault without having a, a couple bursts here. So this is a 1960, an early 1960. It's not that kind of like color fast, bright cherry red. It's the, the more the 59 style red. Was this, did you did you reissue this as like a tomato burst kind of, or is that? Well, this would be different? like we did version one, two, and three of the 1960s, and this mm. is ver the version one. So this would be the 59 right. specs and even the single line or single ring tuners on this one too. So this one was owned by Kirk, uh, Kirk Hammett and uh, it's in the Beauty of the Burst and this is also available through Gibson Certified Vintage currently. So, so this is oh, so you can buy this? Yeah, you can buy this. Computer. How much is it? I, I believe the asking price is half a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah, so, hang on a second, so we, just yeah. see if my American Express card will take it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's lots of pics. <laughs> <laughs> It's really good condition, isn't it's a, it? It's a I mean, fantastic see, And this is what we were talking when we picked the top. See the lines here? Mm. I really like that in the guitars. I don't know, you were very much into that mm. flame, full flame. I love these little, I still, little wood grains. One still. of the, my favorite moments ever that I had on YouTube was going to see um, Bernie Marsden, you know, bless him, yeah. uh, with his beast. And we were mm -hmm. talking about, do you remember what color it was originally? And he was a bit like, I, I'm pretty sure it was a lot redder. And then he just literally <laughs> went, right. you know what? Take the poker chip off. Like I've never taken the poker <laughs> chip off since I've owned this guitar. It was an insane moment. Mm -hmm. And what was a really famous yellow kind of colored, dirty, dirty yellow guitar. Yeah. We take this off and it's just bright red yep. underneath yeah. the poker chip. And it's like, would that have been factory burst? There was two run there. There was yeah, dark, dark burst is the rarer one. Yeah, right. But, um, but yeah, the, they were all intended to be cherry sunburst, and the catalog yeah. says the beautiful cherry sunburst finish. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you did make it out, like the Dutch burst uh, yeah. with that that dark burst finish. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. <laughs> Crazy. All right, and this is the just the bomb. Big ass. Like we shouldn't. This guitar shouldn't exist today because it is so, so rare. This is one of 19 oh. Explorers that shipped in 1958. And it's the fully provenance back to the original owner, Big Ed, who Big Ed uh, was a, a blues musician in Ohio. And he played this guitar until uh, about 19, the late 1980s when it was purchased by Rick Vito, who was then touring with Fleetwood Mac. I thought you were making yeah, Rick, Rick, Beato. Rick Beato for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Rick Vito, Fair yeah. enough. He could probably afford one now in fairness. <laughs> But uh, there's a whole story behind this guitar. It's a big Ed Thompson, huge guy, and had. Uh, okay, let me put this one in your hands. Oh, <laughs> come on. The most valuable guitar we have, but I feel like. You think this is the most valuable? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Because only 19 were made. And Explorers are unobtainium. I would say this is probably the most valuable <laughs> non celebrity owned guitar on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it's got, man? It, it's got the. It's got the, the relic neck that I know it's not, you know, that the very worn back to the wood kind of finish. So Big Ed had huge thumbs. And if you feel right here, you'll see. You, so can. Can. <laughs> you so can. You can yeah. feel the indentation around about here. He must have been a wow. big it fan of the on. sort of wrap around G chord. And when we did the reissue series, so the Karina range that we have now, we replicated this neck, but we made some concessions there to make that a little bit. Because that is like deep. Do you know, what? I, I feel my wedding ring sort of going like that, and then I go, oh, God, and then I go, how much more beaten up could I? Right. Is, is it really likely to make this? Oh my God. I mean, that, you have to hold this in a minute, Pete. Yeah, but yeah. that, this, I, I don't know whether or not this would even be possible to replicate an aging thing because the, the, I think this this would be a challenge even for someone like Tom, I think, to try and... You think? Yeah. It's just crazy. No, it definitely crazy. would be. It's not going to stop him, though. No, <laughs> he's he'll gonna, go he's gonna go it's just crazy. He'll be able to but, go. Yeah. Are these original tuners? No, those are new tuners. Yeah, I was just going to say. In that era, especially in 1958, the original buttons crumble out. Yeah, yeah. Original pickups in it, and as far as you're aware? Yeah, original pickups. You got it? Most original yeah. everything. Some of the potentiometers have been changed, but again... Pretty sure our travel insurance doesn't cover dropping this, Pete. <laughs> no, but with running works. <laughs> Tell you. Shit. How lucky are we? That's amazing. 
It's also just a fantastic sounding guitar. Uh, bon Massa had this uh, on one leg of his tour. He played at the Greek Theater. But he, he says he dreams about the, this guitar, of all the guitars that he's played. That's all Joe Bonamassa dreams about, isn't it? Yeah. Like, this, this <laughs> we're having all sorts of yeah. dreams. He's just dreaming about vintage Gibson guitars. Yeah. Like, ooh! Like this. <laughs> wow. I need to take a picture of you with it, Pete. One for the archives. Look at that. It gives, plays so nicely. Gives, yeah. gives a smile. <laughs> <laughs> That is crazy. I'll give that back. How much does it worth? I would never. Have, I would never. I'd say have... e easily over a million, and um, <laughs> you know, it, I find, would... find another. I mean, it's just. And would, would you generally like say that? Wow. That because there was never a sense that the Les Paul was was so few Les Pauls were made that they would because I would always think that the most valuable. I suppose in fact you're saying that's the most valuable non-provenance type. Correct. Guitar. So yeah. it, there'll be other more valuable guitars, but because of who owned it and what records yeah. they were. I mean, on, it's, it, you know, obviously a real nice flame top. Mm. Like, here's a beautiful 59. This is owned by our CEO, Cesar Guayas. Yeah, I've seen him play yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, so this is an incredible top. But that, that, and then the condition definitely affects mm. uh, the value. But this, the condition is what makes this one cool, is it's just been played to death. And somebody's like, pinky, uh, either pinky, metal yeah. pinky pick or something, yeah, just. Yeah. Just been doing Ward that. Divot, but incredible top on this. Lots of road wear and lashing, but never broken. See, and this is what I really like when, when Tom does mm. on the guitars, where you wear this to feel like this, mm -hmm. where it's not like some are uh, just worn down. So this, of course, but with this real. But you know what I mean? So you mm -hmm. just they just take the lacquer off, but there's no dings and dongs in it. That's my like, There's a, me. A, a really interesting feel to the binding of this guitar too, so it's got really smooth edges, <laughs> and that's what we try to replicate through Murphy Lab. Oh, but it's man. great you have you have the opportunity to to have these things in your disposal to to recreate them, you know. Because that's I guess it's the most difficult thing to find these things and then know exactly what that feels like to then recreate it. Yeah, right. Exactly. It, it's quite easy, I think, sometimes to see a, he a heavy aged Murphy Lab guitar, a and even I would go, I think this is. You, you know, don't like it's this. Like, no, no, no. I, what I mean is, I, don't, I feel it's unrealistic. Mm -hmm. And then you go, yeah, but it's not. Though. Well, it's not though, is it? No, because there is exactly one, mm -hmm. and they really are quite lumpy, aren't they? In yeah. the sense of the way the lacquer kind of. Because your hands, your sweat from your hand mm. would probably make it all crack and warm, you know. Play your lick, lead. play that lick. <laughs> Square, bye boy. <laughs> I've seen, have they done collector's choice of this? Not yet, no. Um, it's something about this little, what is that, like a repair or? Yeah, it, from a Bigsby, so it had a Bigsby, ah, so it yeah, has yeah, a snake yeah, yeah. bite. And this is in the I Beauty of the Burst I book as well. I, I thought I'd seen that on a, on a collector's choice. Maybe I've just seen it in Beauty of the Burst. There's another collector's choice, which I think has got really heavy mm -hmm. wear on the volume. I mean, I one it, honestly, choice, were... this is crazy. What did you think? It says you, like, you'd have some it, sort I of metal. I think like, you know, the, the metal picks that you play, use a lab like steel. Or, yeah, 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 right. Because yeah. yeah. there, there's, there's, like, really there's like this much of the wood gouged out, you know, it's like, well. Or uh, maybe it was a mafia guy and his pinky ring, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, that makes like, more like sense. Yeah, like yeah, a, a yeah. coke nail. Yeah. Time. yeah. <laughs> maybe you never know. Maybe. You have to. Know. <laughs> <laughs> that is incredible as well. Wow. Cesar's got a decent collection there, hasn't he? In fairness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's he's done some damage. That's for sure. All right. So this is one of the more recent acquisitions. I actually became aware of this guitar about 15 years ago. And when I saw it, I knew it was the only one. I, yeah, I don't think and, I've ever seen even a photo of this. And the reason I knew it was the only one is because Gibson made Trini Lopez custom models. They never did one with that reverse headstock except the one in the Trini Lopez uh, advertisement. So, yeah, in the original Trini Lopez magazine advertisement, it has a reverse headstock there and there. So that's the guitar. And that's the, the prototype. And Trini said that he wanted, after receiving the prototype, that was the only revision that he requested was to flip the headstock. Well, the don't, don't have it. Yeah. Um, See, even then it wasn't coolly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, 
that's what we've just done on, on, on the Chapman guitars. We've, we've, the very first guitars where we've actually put the headstock the right way around, but we, we have to call it reverse, reverse. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Not um, reverse, reverse. Yeah. That looks great. It's, it's, what, what, it's what's got, what has he got, like, like fire, um, it's, Firebird uh, tuners? Yeah, or like it's similar to the Firebird headstock, but yeah, it, it takes inspiration from um, actually the late 50s acoustics at Gibson. And what year do you think this is? Okay. 62. Again, 62. it's immaculate. It is completely yeah. immaculate. It looks a bit like that old Bixby headstock. Do you remember the... Yes, yeah, yeah. it does. It the absolutely Martin heads, does, they had that yeah. previous, didn't they, Martin? Did, oh, it's yeah, I mean, there yeah, there were guitars with the six in line style yeah. headstock. I don't think yeah. they were reversed until never, the Firebird debut. I know it sounds, here. Uh, I've never really um, re like listened to any Trini Lopez stuff. You know, it's like I, I, if it wasn't for the Gibson making his yeah. models, I, 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 but I don't know. Was he just my, my dad's a big fan? I yeah. mean, he had Lemon Tree was probably one of his biggest songs, but he uh, yeah, yeah he was in the Sinatra scene, so he right. was you know hanging out with Sinatra in Vegas in the '60s and. That's performing cool. in good time late, late in his career. And then we have the Mary Ford SG. So this is the SG that she played alongside Les Paul that um, I think had a, a long life beyond that, which is why the pickup covers were removed mm. at some point. But yeah. this is ver verifiably the guitar that was uh, on cover of albums and most of their photographs in the early 60s. And this is the, the model that you know, was still using Les Paul's name until 63. And a lot of people don't know the reason that they, Les Paul wanted his name taken off is because they were going through a divorce at that time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, do you know, that's in, because there's so many. Well, that makes sense. Um, uh, the, the story I heard was, was, was that it's just Les Paul wasn't um, a like fan of the, of the guitar. And, and, no, and see, and that, that's the, the common misconception is right. he was playing these guitars in the early 60s. I think he was surprised by the design of it. I don't think maybe at the time there was not a lot of good communication about what, what the intention was. But he adopted it and right. he played it. And it wasn't until 63 where he said, take my name off of it. I don't want one cent going to my then ex-wife, wow. Mary Ford. Wow. So there's a well, whole history. Messy this, well. this was there. Yeah. What was the... So, so that right. So, it, so it just became the SG at that point, rather than the the the, um, the, the you know the Gibson Les Paul. Yeah, and internally it was still referred to as the Les Paul. And right. So it wasn't until yeah '64 where you start seeing the ledger entries kind of change to right. just SG solid guitar. So. And then the the Les Paul as we know it now came back in what '66, '68. Yeah. I still, even that, I just it's it, it blows my mind that the guitar playing community could look at this guitar or probably more of that sort of, you know, start and just sort of go, mm, I don't really like it. <laughs> you know, it's like, so yeah. just don't build that anymore. And, you know, for, for like eight years, it just sort of, I mean, you, not, uh, you could, it's like, bonkers. can you imagine that now? A lot of design things like that, it's like they got it right the first time and mm. just the shape is just so inviting, yeah. you know. Uh, we have some awesome other things to share here. Ooh. So these are Orville Gibson's tools from the no 1890s. Way. So, you know, you probably saw the harp guitar in the acoustic room. So yeah. these are presumably the tools that he was using to make. Can I touch some? Yes, yes, absolutely. This is what he used to brush his dog with? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I think in another hundred years, Tom Murphy will have a draw here. I and think all of right. his sort of, you yeah. know, I think bunches most of keys of Murphy's, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, most just... of his tools look similar to these tools. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Except they're used for different purposes. <laughs> it looks like some, uh, you know, like a, like the Russian mafia's. Uh, it's like a torture, torture set, drawer, right? Some medieval torture yeah. devices. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've got some other. Uh, Oh, these are original, uh, so original these are, template, uh, jigs. Yeah, this is, uh, so that's, oh this gosh. is very heavy. So that that's, that oh, is the made of like brass or something. Template. So yesterday oh at God. Custom Shop, we saw where really? they cut is it that heavy? the yes. outline of the guitars. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Yeah, so that's solid steel on the back. And this is what they used to shape, or used mm. to shape the last Paul guitars in the 1950s. So, this so that's how they'd know where to drill all the control cavities and or are these just not necessarily no, displacement just pins, the are they? The right, okay. So it's when heavy. they, when it's they really cut heavy, the, isn't it? the mahogany body. This is what they would use on the Dupla Carver, which again is that early CNC <sighs> style machine. Yeah. And they would uh, replicate that top carve. And this is from 1968. But, and that, presumably, they'd just have to do it by eye. So they'd have that as a visual reference uh, no, the and then they'd use the... Dupla Carver. Yeah, so they'd put this here and they'd have 
It'd be this machine that would basically press here and then replicate it on the solid block of wood. Oh, I see. They'd be yeah. like, it's, I see. So you'd so have another duplicates. blade over here, yeah. and then as yeah. this raised up, it would be attached to the one that would raise up over here. So yeah. they'd all. That's that, what I mean. It was like a really cool, CNC yeah. Yeah. machine. Yeah. There's a tool like that in Photoshop. Wait, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and that, that was a, a template. Yeah. Um, but this was mainly used for, for top carve. And this is the type of thing right. that, you know, I think existed thankfully over all the years and stayed with the company but maybe mo some people over a certain period of time didn't realize the importance of it or didn't mm. realize what yeah it was yeah but that's yeah that's but, what else has he got then, in there uh, we've got some old you know just really cool pieces of gibson memorabilia that's the old gibsonians banner that's the mandolin is this one of the ledgers that you um that no that's uh oh, so that's did you ever book. find that ledger uh, the 59 Ledger? No, not yet. We're still looking for that. The Heath Ledger. That was, uh, <laughs> is that still a, uh, an award out for that, whoever finds it? Yes, yeah, there still active. There is an award. Yeah. You're good at faking that, Lee, aren't you? Let's oh, look out, we've got and, some uh, old porno mags in here. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does look like a, the draw of a, of a teenage boy. Yeah. So there's oh. the SG. Oh, yeah. So, oh, so SG that, there, yeah. that SG is that SG. Yep. And here is that amp as well. That's the amp. Oh wow, that's so cool! That's that's his shed. I've seen that shed. I've been, I've been to. They've taken that shed yeah, the, and put it inside the, Mesa, the factory. Mesa Boogie yeah, shed. Been, yeah. Yeah. What a great making whoopee. That's a yeah. great song. making whoopee. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then there's one more cool thing behind you. So you mentioned Ted McCarty earlier. This is actually his amplifier behind you. So that was in Ted's office. Wow. The handle this. on that amp is the original prototype of the very handle. So cool. So that, that's the, is that the prototype for every Gibson amp that was No, I think, I think they were using that amp to test the handle and then Ted just took a liking to it and kept it. The you know, Epiphone with Challenger. He brought that even post Gibson career to, you know, he went to Bigsby after Gibson. Yeah. And he brought that amp with him. Oh, look, you can see inside it. It's got a Jensen Alnico. Oh, I bet that sounds great. It's actually an Epiphone amp, but it's been modified. But I like to think that he worked uh, on that amp with Seth Lover and... Yeah. It's a very handle. Well, because it can sort of be varied. <laughs> oh, let's see something it's, on the back here. What does it say? This is a... This is a sample dyed out insert. Choose your own material and color. Use as a trademark or nameplate. Assemble yourself in seconds. What is it like a sort of DIY oh, so you can, make your no, own so, handle? Yeah, so you can put, so, yeah, these and, so put, put your own band name on yeah. there. Yeah, and like we that. put a piece of tweed in there. So when we debuted the handle, it had a piece of the fabric of the amp in there. Which is cool. That's very cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, oh right. that Thank was a much. tremendous well, uh, part of our trip. That will be a highlight. That will be a highlight for sure. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're very welcome. Well, yeah, cool. I man. want to explore I mean, that. Is there? Well. That, that's. Yeah. We should play Mind some blow. guitars. Yeah, we should. Uh, right. All right. Yeah. See Sounds you later, good. guys. So we are still at the Gibson Garage and uh, Al John, Yo. who is head of product development for Epiphone and that we've known a long time, yes. um, was in the, in the offices above. So we invited him down to talk a little bit about Epiphone because there are some fairly momentous changes happening at Epiphone and, and we've started to see a little bit of that over the last two or three years. Because um, what's quite exciting is there's going to be a sort of a, a, a strategic shift in where Epiphone models are allowed to go up to in terms of spec and where Gibson models will start. And I'm so pleased about this because I'm loving the fact that Epiphone's gonna be allowed now to develop guitars that are gonna go up to probably 15, 1600 pounds, dollars, whatever. And some of those um, very, very stripped back Gibsons that I never really felt did Gibson any favors from a from a you know branding perspective? You know, I'm I'm talking about the sort of slab body um, satin finish, no binding, just trying to hit a price point type thing. So, tell us about what 
some of the changes that are coming from, from Epiphone. We can talk about this guitar, which is super excited. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, a little bit more about what you think the opportunities are for Epiphone now that it's going to have a little bit more license to go up spec-wise. Well, I think it's really cool that we just celebrated our 150th anniversary, for one. Yeah. And that leadership is allowing Epiphone to just grow and blossom and, and really mature into where we are. Epiphone Unleashed. You know, we've been talking about this for a while, uh, but it really is great to say, build the finest guitars you can make. Yeah. And really address those things. And we're gonna address it with this new Greeny that you have holding in your hand right now. It's just an amazing guitar. And this represents just a, a great expansion of Inspired by Gibson Custom Shop. We started on this path four or five years ago when we had met before at an mm -hmm. AM show, and I said, hey, get a load of this. It's a 1959 Les Paul standard yeah. that we're doing with some custom shop appointments. And since then, we've really learned a lot. We've been able to really uh, engage with custom shop in a way that we're having a free exchange of ideas. And you know, back in the day, we used to be heavily siloed, mm -hmm. and so Custom Shop did their own thing, Gibson USA did their own thing, Gibson Acoustic did their own thing, Epiphone we did our thing, but now we've come together, all our superpowers are heightened now, <laughs> right? We come together like Voltron, we, we learn from each other, and we implement together, and this is just a great representation of that. We're using, you know, we've updated the carve of the top. We have better binding reveal throughout. We've upgraded our frets to Gibson frets. We've got... Um, oh, they are the skinnier yeah, frets, aren't Yeah, they? we have better frets. Uh, we are using uh, you know, better hardware, and we're using greenie buckers from our Gibson pickup shop. I mean, the greenie buckers are amazing that come on greenie, so we want to do that. There's a two-piece solid mahogany back with no veneer. Yeah. One-piece mahogany neck with no splice joint. So we've got the, the side buttons are actually larger than they had been, uh, the side buttons, the, the side markers mm -hmm. are larger than they had been in the past and they're historically accurate in terms of spacing. So just the little details are all there and should you care to delve into it, you know, you appreciate it, you can see it, you can see it from when, you know, when it's hanging hang in an Anderson store or online on your, on your web store, you can see like, this is a big shift, I mean, We've got the Gibson headstock, y'all. I mean, <laughs> it, it, let's it's, not say uh, that's like the first thing I should have said is it's got the Gibson headstock, <laughs> and and that, you know, again, look, I, we've been we, we've known each other for a long time. We've mm -hmm. been a Gibson and Epiphone dealer for a long time, and I think it's always to me felt, I, and I know Epiphone has a, a history before Gibson acquired it, and I, I know Epiphone always wanted to sort of try and lean into that. Yeah. But really, people were going, you know, the, most people will know of Epiphone as being the, the, li the, the official licensed copy of a, of a Gibson Les Paul mm -hmm. or a Gibson guitar. But it was like, it almost felt like you sort of somehow were just like, but we have to put a different headstock on it. And I was always a bit like, why? You know, it's like, it's the official Gibson version, you know, the, 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 the more affordable one. So it's super, super cool now. I think that the whole inspired by Gibson um, idea, following modern and original the same way that Gibson do. And now this idea of inspired by Gibson Custom Shop, it's just, I might, it might sound silly, you know, it's pretty simple, isn't it? Okay, it's just a different head carved, the, but it's what everybody's wanted for years and years. It's like, you know, and, and I think some of the manufacturing out in the Far East now has got so crazy high. Who was I listening to? It was um, Tim Cook from Apple talking uh -huh. about uh, why do they make stuff in China. And he was, he was like, no, nobody's making stuff in China anymore because the labor's cheap. He's like, it's been probably 10 years that it's even been, it hasn't been cheap for 10 years anyway. Right. People are using China because that's where all the expertise is now right. in manufacturing. You know, yeah. the, the machinery they've got out there, the expertise of operating it is so high um, that's what draws them to, to, to manufacturing in those countries. So why not take the lid off and just go, yeah, let's, just, let's make the best thing that we can possibly make out there. 100%. I mean, the, the craftspeople 
at our factory, and we own that factory, we operate that factory, is heads and tails. They've got so much, uh, so much time invested in our company and us and them. And it's a really great facility. We have great people that work there. They're a part of our family. And so when you take those years and decades of expertise and put them into a guitar, uh, this is the result. Mm. It's the ultimate result. The collaboration of Custom Shop, where they share their plans and their 3D scans of, of the greenie, we're able to implement it and execute it at a high level and then bring it to the masses. And that has been really my goal is Custom Shop is so sometimes unobtainium to hmm. people and they want to get that experience. How do I bring that experience mm -hmm. to them? Because I'm lucky enough to experience it. I want everyone to experience it. And inspired by Gibson Custom Shop, you know, from Epiphone, not only does it represent a new tier, but it's just that uh, better accessibility, the highest level of components we can deliver, uh, those greeny buckers, the made in USA pickups, the, you know, the reissue style specs, you know, the really great wood, and high quality tuners, you know, all uh, of course the Gibson headstock and a, yeah. and a hard shell case, and just put it all in there with the workmanship, the the craftsmanship, um, you know, for years and years of building, they're all put in that. So, guitar. so Greeny Epiphone Greeny is going to be a November twenty twenty three launch. So yeah. we're going to hold on to this video for a little bit so that when it comes out, it should coincide with this launch, which would be cool. Um, I know you showed me some other stuff there, which if I mention, you'll kill me. So, but what can we talk about in terms of, uh, you know, what nuggets can you sort of infer might be coming or other changes perhaps to the uh, regular Epiphone line that might happen over the next, you know, year or so? Well, I think... If uh, anything. Right, well, I think, I think the key is it's, you know, we're just gonna continue to grow yeah. and expand, inspired by Gibson Custom Shop. So people are, are going, wow, you know, you're just getting more expensive. And I said, well, yes, but only to the benefit of the fans mm. and benefit of the players that want that experience. We're still going to be bringing out great Inspired by Gibson stuff, Epiphone Originals, and, and it's great how these things kind of play off each other. You've got Inspired by Gibson Custom Shop and Masterbuilt, the original Epiphone. And then you have our original Epiphone and then Inspired by Gibson. And we'll still be introducing new stuff. We'll be expanding into some acoustics and bluegrass. You're gonna see artist models that have leaked online already. I think a lot of people understand uh, what's going on there. I may but, or may not have seen that particular artist <laughs> model that we cannot speak about and may or may not have been leaked online. Yes. And I may or may not think it's awesome, by the way. Oh, it is. And it's great. <laughs> and, you know, uh, so we have these great artist models coming. We've got great expansions of our lines in both the in, you know, Epiphone Original and Inspired by Gibson, and as well as our Master Built and, and Gibson, Inspired by Gibson Custom Shop. So it's just gonna be a really great celebration of guitars. And you know, if 150 years was epic, 151 <laughs> years will be through the, mo through the roof, absolutely amazing. And we just, uh, we're just so over the moon that Andertons is on board and all the great fans out there of Epiphone are, are gonna be uh, coming back and, and getting some great guitars from you guys. So. Oh, well, uh, it's always a pleasure to see you. Um, <laughs> uh, it's been too long. We'll make sure we don't leave it uh, so long next time. But look, thank you again, Al John, for coming along and showing us. Uh, Greeny, you're gonna be able to come try in your local Epiphone dealer, hopefully Andertons, uh, from November. But like Al John said, stay tuned, because there's so much other cool stuff coming next year. Stay tuned, Andertons, go get it. Go get it now. Thank you.